Good morning, church. All I heard was one word. Good morning, church. Yes, amen. I am so happy to see all these beautiful faces with these beautiful masks. I mean, people, we have gotten creative with masks, right? We got some blue ones out here. We got some watermelons. We got some dark blue ones. We got some black ones. We got them all, right? That's one thing we can say. We don't discriminate. Amen. Hey, that's my joke. Pop, pop, pop. It didn't work, right? It just didn't work. But anyway, I just wanted to say good morning. Hello, Facebook family. We miss you guys. We thank God for technology because if it wasn't for technology, we'd be some lonely folks. But because we have technology, guess what? We can pop on live and say hello and speak to our loved ones and the ones that are not here in the church and just say we miss you, we love you, and you're always in our thoughts. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for just being an amazing father, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, as we get ready to worship, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds so that we can be used as vessels to the ones that are out here in the technical world and the ones that are here under the roof in these four walls, Father God. We ask that you do all these things in your son's name.
so merciful. We just can't thank you enough for everything that you are, for everything you've done in our lives through each moment, Lord, how you're taking us through right now in the present, and, and how we know that in the future there's even more glory to come, Lord. We thank you for including us in that glory, Lord. As we sing this last song, um, may we just focus on your holiness and um, not just everything that you're doing for us, which is awesome, but everything that you are, because that's enough, yeah. right? Amen. That's enough. Uh, just that we can stand here in your presence and sing to you, that you would consider us worthy enough to just lift up your, your name this morning, Lord. We, we're just in awe of that. May we never lose that awe, um, and may we just continue to glorify your name and to magnify your name for everything that you are, Lord.
Lord, thank you so much for all that you've given us today and this week. And just keep us healthy, happy, and safe in these times. And let us keep our eyes focused on you and open our hearts to hear your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Well, isn't that just like the Holy Spirit? Just before you're supposed to get up here and share the word, he hits you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Do you mind if I take this off? (laughs) Oh, my God. Just when you thought you had a message already developed. It's all good, though. So before the message, uh, I have some announcements. The men's get-together is next Saturday at 8.30 a.m. Zoom or social distancing here at church. My understanding is they went phenomenally well was it the have you all met once or twice before three times I was hoping maybe I could like play hooky from work but James who was a boss looked at me I was like okay I guess I I couldn't play hooky from work not that I work for James but he's a boss and he didn't appreciate that so um And then Wednesday night prayer at 7 o'clock, Zoom prayer meeting. And if you haven't already participated, it's actually a lot of fun. It really is. We're all kicking back. I'm either driving, usually driving in from work at that time. But it's just great to connect and to pray for one another, to share praise reports, and to ask for prayer, either for yourself, your family, in my case, co-workers and others at any point. Well, okay. Like I said, the message has been modified in the last three minutes. But that's all good. Um, we, obviously, we've all been reading from uh, First Thessalonians each week uh, for the last now five weeks. And um, I re-listened, the Lord woke me up at 5 o'clock this morning, and I re-listened to James and to Jordan and to Justin to try to get a, kind of get a gist of where he was leading us. And um, the overriding theme uh, is the hopeful expectation of Christ's return. to allow the sanctifying work of Holy Spirit. And in the process of allowing the sanctifying work of Holy Spirit to watch how it manifests and transforms the lives around us. Most notably our lives, first and foremost. But in the process of going through all that, um, when the word comes in and starts to take root, you can bet persecution follows. So there's a lot of suffering, which James mentioned. There is a transforming power and a revolution that takes place that upends the culture that both Jordan and Justin spoke about. The local culture, whatever that is, at whatever time in history, The word usually goes right smack. And so all of the challenges and social injustices that are occurring come face to face with the truth of the gospel. 
that there is a loving God who expects far more from us. And so, even if I can just digress just a little bit before I get in the Word, this is what the Lord brought to me, which was just, he's just downloading as you all were worshiping. The sanctifying work of Holy Spirit cleans us up, absolutely. I don't know about anyone else, but the BC is not as pretty. Just saying. And I'm reminded, in fact, even before I got here, I'm reminded of how much God loves us. When I was well, saying that I was walking with the Lord, but my life wasn't reflecting it. I mean, I was listening to the word. I liked it, but it wasn't exactly changing my, I mean, I, I, I got conviction. And I had, uh, was a part of a very small fellowship, a family church, and uh, all of us guys were about the same age. And we held each other to account. And uh, I would hold them to account, and then they would hold me to account. But apparently I wasn't listening. So God in his grace and his love and his mercy touches the heart of a man 8,500 miles away prior to coming to uh, Clearwater. Pastor George Makala from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. He and I meet, I don't know, 2004, 2005, when I was walking in my own foolishness. <laughs> he had a word. He recognized when we met, and we became friends and, and enjoyed each other's company, but as he spent more time with me, he recognized that there were some broken pieces in some activities I was involved in that ought not be involved in. And um, he spoke a word that was so telling. He read my mail from 8,500 miles away, and he showed me in a journal that the Lord had revealed to him that there is a man whom I want you to speak these words to when you get to America. He showed it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. So, God's love for us and his desire for him to do a sanctifying work in us is so profound and so beautiful that if the people right around you don't have the influence that they ought to have or you're not being receptive, his love for us if he has to send somebody from 8,500 miles away to speak words of life, he will do that. He brought that to me at like 7 o'clock this morning. And I didn't quite see the connection until about 8.30 of what had happened this week in almost God's sense of humor and also a uh, sense of timing. That sanctifying work, when we surrender ourselves into his care and we allow that washing of the word to take place, that cleansing of the stuff in our life, he is then able to pour his spirit into us, through us, so it's into us to further the cleansing, further the preparing through us to those surrounding us. And maybe not even right next to us physically, but so he reminded me this week, minding my own business, I needed to add a service to our cell phone plan so I could potentially sell a unit to a gentleman in Canada. So I called up Metro PCS. We've been part of that for 16 years. 
And uh, there's a representative on the other end. I'm thinking, she's got a really unique voice, really cool accent. I wonder where she's from. And in the process of, of talking to her and adding the plan, I have no clue, other than Holy Spirit, I have no clue how we got on the subject of Jesus. But we did. The first part of the conversation had to do with my relationship to my wife and how this young lady across the phone line saying, oh, 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 you're so blessed. You're so blessed. So here I'm calling for a service, and the Lord segues it into a conversation about Jesus. Before the close of the conversation, this young lady named Mayetta from Devon, South Africa, pours out her heart in the brokenness that's so there, so <laughs> that a conversation with someone she's never met, she sensed in me the presence of the one who could set her free. <laughs> That's totally floored. And the beautiful part of the conversation, there's two parts that were just absolutely, and then made me cry with her on the phone. I had to leave my office and go into a, an RV so that we could cry together. Really, I mean, it was just, just, it was so amazing, you know what I'm saying? And, and I just am reminded of his, I mean, he's, he play, God plays the long game. We're right here. We see just here. But his finished work, he sees, she was going to take her life that night because a young man and she, they had sex. She got pregnant. Not only did she get pregnant, but it was also the baby was in her fallopian tube. So she had to have an abortion. She was crushed. She was devastated. She was ashamed, and she spoke to no one in her family. Nobody in her, I don't know if Devin is... It's a rel relatively small. It's just it's outside of Johannesburg. I was safe. She knew I had a heart for Yeshua, and she she sensed through the phone lines that here is someone who I can I can share my heart with. <laughs> and she said. Repeatedly, repeatedly, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. I was going to take my life tonight because she was so heavy and so burdened. Mayetta. And as we talked a little bit further, because I, I, <laughs> come on, we all do this. The Holy Spirit wells up inside of us, wells up inside of us, and let's pray. That's what we do. We want to reach and, and touch and console. And we prayed together, and she sobbed, and she sobbed, and she sobbed. And then she told me the story. And then before the end of the conversation, and this is what really broke me, she goes, you know, I never knew my father. So I've never actually had a male in my life. And she said, to me, God sent you as my father to speak words of life. And it just, a few days before, or maybe I guess it's been a few days before, because this, this happened this week, um, I sent out a kind of a broadcast text to Lionel and to a few of my brothers, um, Happy Father's Day. Lionel usually never responds by text because he's just not really a texter. But he sent me a text, and this is part of the reason why it kind of broke me. Um, I had had uh, dinner. Marlene was not able to join us, but I had dinner with uh, Lionel and Marla on her birthday. The big five-o. 
Oh, no, I'm sorry, the big 38.99999. That's right, sorry about that. Sorry. Hope this is not being recorded. Um, it'd be big trouble. <laughs> hey, love you. 38.999. We had an, an awesome time. We really did. I get this text back from Lionel. Totally blows me away. He goes, uh, John, you have been a father to more people than you know. I've been Papa John to their precious children. I'm, I should be saying this, but I, I don't want to care. I'm 56, Marla's 50, I'm her stepdad. It's been a little strange, but it's been awesome. But I believe what he was implying was that to even to him, because he lost his parents. God is an amazing God. When Pastor George spoke what he spoke into my world, he told me this. The Lord, Jesus, is preparing you. He didn't say Marlene. He said he is preparing. You must be sanctified. You must be cleansed of your unrighteousness because the Lord is preparing you and was within a year for, for Marlene. And from Marlene, Lionel and Marla. And from Lionel and Marla to Brianna, Skyler, Jeremiah, Joshua, to Cody, to Cody's daughter, Adriel. His sanctifying work. So, I will read the scripture, <laughs> by the by. Um, but it just, it, if we surrender ourselves into his care and allow Holy Spirit to do the sanctifying work, he's doing it to set us free. He's doing it to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that we might walk in the fullness of what he has for us, and that he might pour himself unhindered, unimpeded into us, the vessel, the temple, so that pour out into another life to those surrounding us. And just as the last song they were singing, it just blew me away. Another simple story, and then I'll, and we'll get to scripture. Um, this week, uh, was it Monday or Tuesday? Uh, we've lived in our house now, what, almost seven years. It's nice, small, quaint. And over the years, you know, we clean this and clean that and clean this, but we never actually cleaned the outside of our house because it looked, looked all right. But on this particular Tuesday morning, I woke up bright and early, and I thought, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wash the outside of our house. I have a pressure washer. I have a hose and a long pole and soap that I use to wash cars. So I started early in the morning. The sun was back there, so it was shaded 85 degrees in the shade. And I began washing and I went and I went the entire place and it just it looked great. And then my neighbor across the way, Bernardo, has a pressure washing business. And he was loading up his heavy-duty pressure washer in the back of his truck. And I went over just to talk with him. And he goes, a lot of work, huh? I'm like, you're not kidding. He goes, I'll be back. And then you and I. I said, no, I, I, I don't have the money for it. He goes, don't worry about it. We'll work it out. When you all were singing... I love this. Many times, we want to take it upon ourselves in our own strength to wash our house. 
we don't exactly have all the tools. But, you know, you work with what you got. So, uh, I did a pretty good job. I was totally wiped by the end of that process. And I, it looked pretty good. It looked better than it did, but there. So, Fernando goes, I come back and we do your house. He came back in the afternoon, pulled up his big truck with his <laughs> big power washer. He said, all I need is the water. And he proceeded. <laughs> and he wiped layers that he did not know existed on that house. He did a first wash with just water, and it came back with a solution of bleach. And he was working hard, and I said, well, let me try that. And this thing nearly blew me off my feet. Our house looks like it's newly painted. And what was revealed to me when I was sitting there listening to worship Then my neighbor Fernando came over with his professional grade pressure washer. And the layers of grime over the years came off, revealing the beauty which lay hidden beneath. It just needed the work of a master cleaner. Ha! <laughs> How cool is that? We have been in First Thessalonians, chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And it seems the ongoing theme is sanctify yourself, therefore. Cleanse yourself, therefore. Be worthy of the calling for which you've been called for. But in all of those things to do, it is he himself, God himself, who personally... What other God in the world personally brings his pressure washer to you and you guys work together? He's got the tools, he is the mastery, and it's participatory. And you realize when you, whoa, oh my, you don't have the strength, you don't have the ability. And he doesn't need your help, necessarily, but he wants you to participate. He wants you to be mindful of surrendering yourself so that he can do the finished work, so that he can pour himself into you and pour out of you. In chapter 5, as in all letters, in fact, in all of Scripture, that he did break it down into chapters. We do it, so it's more understandable. But in all letters, there's a, a conclusion, a summing up, if you will. So most everything that was written in here in the fifth chapter was already written in chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 in different ways and different illustrations. Chapter 5, but as to the suitable times and the precise seasons and dates, brethren, you have no necessity for anything being written to you. For you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the return of the Lord Jesus will come as unexpectedly and suddenly as a thief in the night. When people are saying, all is well and secure, and there is peace and safety, then in a moment unforeseen destruction, ruin and death will come upon them as suddenly as labor pains come upon a woman with child. And they shall by no means escape, for there will be no escape. 
those of us that know the Lord Jesus Christ and the work of Holy Spirit and the transforming power of God. I know not all are called to be evangelists, but all of us are called to share the goodness and the grace and the love of Jesus. All of us are called to tell those around us, either with words or without words, of the goodness of the Lord. And to forewarn them of the impending destruction in their lives. If we walk circumspectly, if Holy Spirit is doing his work in us continuously, because we're continually sur surrendering ourselves to his care and his work, then boy, I tell you what, mm -mm. I, I don't know if their blood will be on our hands. I don't know. I, I, maybe scripture says that, and I'm not aware of it, but I can tell you this. There are people that I work with that are going headlong into a place that none of us would ever want anyone to go. If we don't allow the sanctifying work, that boldness, that enduring power to come through the vicissitudes of life, it won't be there. You know what I'm saying? If you think that, if you or I think that we have the power and the ability just to tell them like it is, we don't. It's the power and it's the sweetness and the gentleness in the love that's poured out to all men. Father, I just pray that you would help all of us be mindful of those around us that are going headlong into hell and they don't even know it. I pray that you would give us the, the heart and the words. I pray that you would give us an opening, an open in their heart, in their minds, that they would receive what we who you would pour through us to them would make room so that they don't go headlong. If we sense and we, we know that they have no regard for you or your word, Lord, give us the means, the words, the something that because of your work in our world that you would, we could speak to them and at least give them a choice. But you are not, you are not given up to the power of darkness, brethren, for that day to overtake you by surprise like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong either to the night or to the darkness. Accordingly, then, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us keep wide awake alert, watchful, cautious, and on our guard. And let us be sober, calm, collected, and circumspect. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But we belong to the day. Therefore, let us be sober and put on the breastplate, the corslet of faith and love, and for a helmet, the helmet and the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to incur his wrath. He did not select us to condemn us, but that we might obtain his salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Verse 10, who died for us so that whether we are still alive or are dead at Christ's appearing, we might live together with him and share his life. Zoe life. Therefore, or because of this, encourage, admonish, exhort one another, and edify, strengthen, and build up one another just as you are doing. And we do this here in this fellowship. We have conversations. We have text messaging. 
we reach out to one another. We like to have fun. And we like to be playful. But at the heart of it, we love one another. We edify and build up one another. And if need be, we admonish. Now also we beseech you, brethren, get to know those who labor among you. Recognize them for what they are. Acknowledge and appreciate and respect them all. A few days back, actually Wednesday night after a prayer, Elliot reached out to me. And then the next day, we went texting back and forth. And in that brief interaction of texting, I got to know Elliot. And I got to know his heart for this fellowship. It's amazing the gifts and talents and the heart and the ministry that each one of us carry in this fellowship for this fellowship, for one another. One of the things that really resounded to me, what Elliot had mentioned, he goes, I just hope that each one of us recognize just how important each one of us are to each one of us. He said, if there's a way we could communicate that, it's his heart. I wouldn't have known that if he was only back there, which he does obviously a phenomenal job when he's here, but I, it's just his, <laughs> there was no mistaking Elliot's heart. And I thought, it, and this is before I read this, and I thought, that's Elliot. We beseech you, brethren, get to know those who labor among you. Recognize them for what they are. Acknowledge and appreciate and respect them all. Your leaders who are over you in the Lord and those who warn and kindly reprove and exhort you and hold them in very high and most affectionate esteem in intelligent and sympathetic appreciation of their work and be at peace among yourselves. Obviously in the world in which we're living right now, not too many people are at peace with one another. Let it not be that among us. James mentioned, this is not a platform for politics, nor a platform for economics, to, to speak about all of that. Because everybody has a differing view of this, that, and the other. This is not the place. This place is to exalt Jesus, to encourage and edify and build up the body of Christ and to be reminded of the depth of the love that God has for us. Uh, much like Justin said, it was kind of funny, he said, I came with this whole going chapter by chapter, book by book, kicking and screaming. You know, because he wanted the free flow of the, the spirit and thought it might, I don't know, might be inhibited. But then he learned, oh my God, how instructive, of course it's the word, but how instructive it is and how the Holy Spirit is able to take one word, one syllable, and teach the fullness of God. And we earnestly beseech you, brethren, admonish, warn, and seriously advise those who are out of line the loafers, the disorderly, and the unruly. Encourage the timid and faint-hearted, help and give your support to the weak souls, and be very patient with everybody, always keeping your temper. I will say that small fellowship I was a part of, they did this. 
and then he had to send Pastor George. <laughs> See that none of you repays another with evil for evil, but always aim to show kindness and seek to do good to one another and to everybody. Be happy in your faith and rejoice and be glad-hearted continually, always. Be unceasing in prayer, praying perseveringly. Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. Be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and mediator of that will. Do not quench or suppress or subdue the Holy Spirit. When the Lord had opened the door for the conversation with Mayetta, I was, for a period of 20 minutes or thereabouts, removed from the element in which I worked which is not a very godly, conducive element. It's a sales environment. It's much not so nice language. I don't participate in that, but it's, it's around me. So I was in this little bubble, and I walked in, and I went into, it's called the tower. I walked into the tower, which is one of the sales managers said, and there are blah, 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 blah. And I had an audience with uh, Tim, my boss. And I had a, a little teeny tiny door opened. And I hadn't gone in there for that purpose. But because I was still in that place of awe, he goes, what you doing? They call me Jedediah because of, well, I'm not wearing my hat, but I look like Jed and I. And he goes, um, what you doing? And I said, Tim, I just had an absolutely wonderful moment. He goes, huh? And I shared with him what had just transpired, and that was my opening. And I said, Tim, that is why I follow Jesus. I told him, I said, I'm not trying to be goody two-shoes. If that happens, I said, but I said, imagine this, Tim. I make a simple phone call so that I can make a FaceTime call with someone in Canada because I have an iPhone. And God opens a door for me and for specifically for him to touch the life of a girl that was about to take her life. You realize, I realized this morning, was 85, she was, <laughs> Pastor George is 8,500 miles away, and she's 8,300 miles away. And there's about 2,000 miles between, I had to figure out the math, 2,000 miles between Devon, South Africa, and Dar es Salaam. I, and I said, that's why I follow Jesus. And little by little, I'm able to share bits and pieces of God's love because his mother was on fire for the Lord, he told me. And he goes, I have stacks of these Bibles and concordances and all this kind of stuff. He said, half the stuff I, I gave away, then I realized, oh my God, this is my mom's. And he was going to give that to me, but he realized, this is my mom's. So one never knows the opportunities that we have to share that which wells up in us because he wiped his a tear out of his eye. He was touched by Holy Spirit in that moment. Do not spurn the gifts and utterances of the prophets. Do not appreciate prophetic revelations nor despise inspired instruction or exhortation or warning. 
but test and prove all things until you can recognize what is good. To that hold fast. Abstain from evil. Shrink from it and keep aloof from it in whatever form or whatever kind it may be. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. Separate you from profane things. Make you pure and wholly consecrated to God himself. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved, sound and complete, and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Faithful is he who is calling you to himself and utterly trustworthy. And he will also do it, fulfill his call by hallowing you and keeping you. He is faithful. He is, I love this, utterly trustworthy. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a sacred kiss. I solemnly charge you in the name of the Lord to have this letter read before all the brethren. The grace, the unmerited favor, and blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, be with you all. Amen. Amen. So be it. So, Father, we just give you thanks. Thank you for this word. Thank you for touching our hearts. Thank you for causing your spirit to pour through us because of your sanctifying work in us. We thank you. We pray that you would continue to minister this word and the words that you've spoken through each one of us in the past five weeks and well beyond that. And we pray, Lord, if there's anyone here that does not yet know you, we ask you, you say, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. We ask right now, Lord, if there's anyone among us, anyone listening to us, if you do not yet know Yeshua, if you don't know what it's like to be saved, if you don't know what it's like to be set free, I would say, repeat this prayer. Father God, I thank you for the love that you've poured out to me through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, through the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I recognize that I don't have the power I don't have the tools to cleanse myself. I pray right now that the master cleanser, Father God himself, through the sanctifying and redemptive work of Jesus Christ, that you would set me free, that you would cleanse me from all unrighteousness, that my life would be hidden in Christ. I recognize that my dirty hands can never get clean on my own. That I need the sanctifying and redemptive work of Jesus. I need to exchange my broken life for his complete and whole life, found only in and through Jesus Christ. I call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, come, save me. Save this wretched person that I have become. Set me free. Let your redemptive work on the cross set me free. We ask this in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
See 